Hello there, and welcome to the channel. My name is Videosyncratic, and in this series, I am slowly investigating the flags used by every country in Europa Universalis IV in order to find their origins. This episode will be focusing on the formable nations, those countries which do not exist at the game's starting date of 1444, but can be created by certain actors that meet the correct criteria. Due to the sheer number of these nations, I couldn't possibly cover all of them in one video, at least not in a timely manner, and so I will split them over three episodes. The countries I will cover in this episode are all from Europe. For a list, please check the table of contents that should be pinned in the comment section below. I am eager to begin, but one last thing before I do so. The first three flags of this episode, namely those of Ireland, Great Britain, and the Netherlands, have already been covered in earlier episodes, so I hope you don't mind that I'm just going to reuse clips from those episodes instead of recording them afresh. I think a very good place to start would be this formable nation, which is Ireland itself. The flag used by Ireland in EU4 is a silver-stringed golden harp on an azure field. This design is taken wholesale from the royal standard and coat of arms of the Kingdom of Ireland, which was formed after King Henry VIII of England passed the Crown of Ireland Act in 1542. That said, this coat of arms may actually predate this, and the symbol of the harp and the colour blue have long been associated with Ireland, with the earliest record being in the Weinbergen Roll from the 1280s. The exact reason for the association of Ireland and harps is not known. The harp in question is modelled on a clashach, a medieval Irish instrument sometimes known as a Gaelic or Irish harp. In fact, the harp used on the modern Irish coat of arms is directly based on the so-called Brian Baru harp, which can still be seen today at Trinity College, Dublin. Over the years of its use to represent the Kingdom of Ireland, the harp gradually became more embellished, which led to a variant where the harp takes the form of a winged woman. The colour blue is frequently used on Irish flags, and its use as such is sometimes referred to as St Patrick's Blue. Blue is associated with a mythological personification of Ireland. In turn, she is likely based on a number of real queens bearing the same name as her who lived during the 10th and 11th centuries. This name is Garmlach, and it's a compound name that, taken literally, can be translated to mean Blue Sovereign. Now that I have covered both elements that make up the flag of Great Britain, I will move on to the only formable nation of this episode. In game, the Kingdom of Great Britain, much like real life, is formed from a fusion of England and Scotland. In turn, its flag is a fusion of the two flags representing those countries. The Cross of St George for England, and St Andrew's Saltire for Scotland. This flag represents an evolutionary stage between the individual national flags and the flag of the United Kingdom. As in real life, this flag was used before the Kingdom of Ireland was formally merged into the United Kingdom so no Irish elements are incorporated into the flag. This is represented in-game, as no Irish provinces are required to form the nation of Great Britain. Upon the creation of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland in 1801, St Patrick's Saltire was added to represent Ireland, and that design of the flag is still used today. This early flag of Great Britain was first adopted for national use in 1707, after the Acts of Union officially merged the two kingdoms. However, the flag had actually been used from 1606, 101 years prior to this date, as a naval ensign. The final nation to be covered in this episode is the formable nation of the Netherlands, which can be formed by nations with Dutch or Flemish as their primary culture, or specifically, if they're Burgundy. This represents the Dutch Republic, more properly known as the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands, which in real life got its start with the Union of Utrecht in 1579, which then led to the ratification of the Act of Abjuration declaring its independence in 1581. Unlike many of the other symbols covered so far in this episode, the Netherlands actually uses a real flag generally called the Prince's Flag. The flag is a horizontal tricolour with stripes in orange, white and blue. These colours were used extensively by William the Silent, the Prince of Orange and main leader of the Dutch Revolt. Dutch armies sporting these colours entered Ghent in 1577, 
and possibly as early as 1574, the officers of William's armies were wearing brassards in these colours for purposes of distinction. While the historic Principality of Orange and the colour, or for that matter the fruit, don't actually share an etymological connection, it didn't stop the two from being conflated, and thus ended up becoming the national colour of the Netherlands. As for the story of how the Dutch flag evolved into its current version, with a red stripe replacing the orange, there is no clear answer. While this story may admittedly be beyond the scope of this video, one frequently repeated explanation is simply that the orange dye used was too expensive and too unstable, with it ending up fading to the red after prolonged use anyway. The immediate predecessor to the modern Dutch flag is the Staatenvlag, which was proclaimed by the States General. The 17th century saw an ongoing conflict between the republican influences of the States General and the more monarchical ideas of the Stadthouder, an office occupied by a member of the House of Orange. The proclamation of this new flag may therefore have been intended to remove representation of that dynasty from national symbols. While I think that the original version of the Prince's flag is quite a handsome one, especially considering how orange is a fairly rare colour to see on flags, it is also important to note that the orange striped flag acquired a number of negative connotations beginning in the 1930s. The National Socialist Movement in the Netherlands was a fascist political party founded in the early 1930s, and later becoming Nazi collaborators during the occupation of the Netherlands during the Second World War. They chose the colours of orange, white and blue, as well as the prince's flag, as a political symbol, and some of these associations with ultranationalist ideologies remain to this day. One more flag I wanted to cover before I move on to the main course of this episode is that of Venezuela. All of the post-colonial tags featured in EU4 are formable nations by definition, but I have actually covered all of these in episodes 3 and 4. However, I did somehow manage to miss out Venezuela, so now is as good a time as any to rectify this grave error. The flag used to represent Venezuela in-game is taken directly from its national flag, although it has had identifying markers including the National Coat of Arms and the Arc of White Stars removed. As such, it is very similar to the in-game flag of Colombia, with the only noticeable difference being the ratio in the heights of the stripes. These two flags, alongside the flag of Ecuador, all have their origins in the flag used by Gran Colombia, the predecessor nation of the three that broke apart in 1831. In terms of colour symbolism, the yellow is said to represent the riches of the country, sovereignty and harmony, blue represents the Caribbean that bounds the nation to the north, and red represents the blood spilt in the battle for independence a common theme across many of the flags of South America. Spain can be formed by any nation in the Iberian culture group, with the exception of Muslim Granada, which I will cover in just a moment. In real life history, the Iberian Peninsula was split amongst several competing Christian kingdoms until 1469, when the marriage between Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon created a political union that covered the majority of the peninsula. Despite this union, I do also think it is worth pointing out that Castile and Aragon retained separate identities and some autonomy from each other until the Nueva Planta decrees formally unified the two into the Kingdom of Spain in 1715. Regardless, in EU4, Spain represents the union created between Castile and Aragon, as its flag is directly taken from the combined coats of arms of Isabella and Ferdinand, who are known collectively as the Catholic Monarchs. These are quite a complex set of arms, so I will go through them piece by piece. To begin, in the first and fourth quarters are the coat of arms of the Crown of Castile. In turn, these two are quartered so that the first and fourth quarters display a gold triple towered castle on a red field, and the second and third quarters show a crowned purple lion rampant on a silver field. These are taken from the coat of arms of the Kingdom of Castile and Leon, with the two having previously been separate countries until their final union under Ferdinand III in 1217. 
Together, these are one of the best examples of canting arms. That is, a coat of arms that represents the bearer through the form of a visual pun. In this instance, these devices represent the etymological origins of the two countries. Castile is quite transparently cognate with the English word castle, and its name is believed to have originally been the Land of Castles. In the case of Léon, its name actually derives from a contraction of the Latin word legio, after the legion stationed there during Roman times. However, Léon is the Spanish word for lion, hence this coat of arms. Returning once more to the Spanish flag, the second and third quarters are taken from the coat of arms of Ferdinand II of Aragon. In turn, these arms have two distinct components. The first of these are four red bars on a gold field, taken from the coat of arms of Aragon. The second element also includes these four bars, but also adds two black eagles displayed, each in a white chevron. This is actually taken from the coat of arms of the Kingdom of Sicily, which was in personal union under the Crown of Aragon from 1412 onwards. As Sicily is not required to form Spain in EU4, it could be argued that these arms are rather misplaced, but I also appreciate that finding similarly fitting arms that are also historical may have proved a challenge. In either case, the Black Eagle on the Sicilian arms originates from those of the Hohenstaufen dynasty, as for many years they held the title in personal union with their position as Holy Roman Emperor. An alternative formable nation to Spain is Andalusia, which can be formed by the Emirate of Granada or any other country with Andalusian or Maghrebi primary culture. Long before EU4 begins, the lion's share of Iberia had been under the rule of the Emirate and later Caliphate of Cordoba, which would later collapse into a number of competing independent polities called Taifas. By 1444, only one of these statelets remained, and that was Granada. With this historical context in mind, and judging by the provinces required to form Andalusia, I believe that it is intended to represent a hypothetical outcome where the former core lands of the Caliphate of Cordoba are reunited under Muslim rulers. In terms of its flag, it is actually a simple recolour of the flag used by Granada, with its red field changed to white, and with the bend the writing is on having been changed to a deeper shade of yellow for better contrast. Throughout the Islamic world, it was common to feature Arabic calligraphy on identifying symbols, and especially so on battle flags. The flag of Granada was no different, and its text is also featured on that of Andalusia. It can be translated as, there is no conqueror but God. Finally, I believe that the change of colour from red to white is very intentional. The Umayyad dynasty, who had ruled the Caliphate of Cordoba, had been associated with a white standard since they chose it in contrast to the black standard of their Abbasid rivals. Thus, the colour white further harkens back to the days of Cordoba. Moving on to Italy now, Tuscany represents the Duchy of Tuscany, which was later elevated to a Grand Duchy in 1569. To cut a long story short, Tuscany represents the outcome of the city-state of Florence casting off the last vestiges of republicanism and becoming a hereditary monarchy more typical of Europe. For much of its history, the powerful family of the Medici effectively dominated the government of Florence, and so it should be no surprise that when the city shed its last pretenses of democracy, it was a member of this family that became its first duke. The flag used by Tuscany is adapted from the coat of arms of its ruling house. As a long-standing family which managed to wrangle their way into many of the greatest offices of Europe, the De Medici coat of arms has a great many variations, but the one that inspired the EU4 flag is the augmented arms granted to the family in 1465 by King Louis XI of France. This explains the presence of the fleur-de-lis, perhaps the most iconic of French symbols seen at the top of the escutcheon. The rest of the arms comprise five red spheres on a gold field. There are three main theories as to the origins of this device, and I think all of them are worth repeating here. 
The first of these concerns the legendary origin of the family. According to this tale, the Medici ancestor was a knight in the service of Charlemagne, who defeated a giant. The knight's shield protected him from the giant's onslaught, but was left with multiple spherical dents. The second origin story is one of etymology. The Italian word Medici refers to medical doctors, and so the devices on these arms are described as either being spherical pills called boli, or cupping vessels, both typical tools of the trade for medieval doctors. The third and final theory is also by far the most likely. As a wealthy banking family, the Medici were originally members of the Florentine Guild of Money Changers. In this interpretation, the Medici arms were based on the coat of arms of this guild, and so these spheres are intended to represent coins. The double barrel Sardinia Piedmont represents the historical nation formed when the Duchy of Savoy exchanged Sicily for Sardinia in the context of the War of the Spanish Succession. The flag of Sardinia Piedmont used in game is actually the war ensign of the Royal Sardinian Navy, in use from 1785 to 1802. The flag of Savoy was originally a crusader flag, comprising a white cross on a red field. However, when Savoy acquired a Mediterranean coastline, they encountered an unforeseen problem. The flag was already being used by another sovereign nation, the Knights of Malta. In order to differentiate the two flags, Savoy tried a variety of alterations, in this instance by using the Savoyard flag as a canton on an azure field. Historically speaking, Italy did not truly unify until 1861, 40 years after the typical game of EU4 ends. However, the idea of Italy as a unified nation existed long before this date, and the in-game version of Italy represents this hypothetical early unification. As such, the flag it uses does not share much in common with the modern Italian flag, except for the colours of red, white and green. The general design of the flag follows that used by the Napoleonic Kingdom of Italy. This comprised a green rectangle charged with a Napoleonic eagle superimposed on a white rhombus on a red field. The Kingdom of Italy created by Napoleon was essentially a French client state, being ruled under personal union with Napoleon also having the title King of Italy. The Kingdom was formed from the predecessor Italian Republic, which in turn was amalgamated from several of the client states, known as sister republics, scattered throughout Italy. The flag of the Italian Republic was the direct predecessor of that of the Kingdom, albeit without the Napoleonic Eagle and in a square aspect ratio. In turn, this took its iconic colours from the tricolours used by the Cisalpine Republic amongst other sister republics. The origins of these colours come from the flag of the Lombard Legion, which in turn took them from the city colours of Milan and the green of the Milanese Civic Guards uniform. While an independent Croatia existed both before and long after the time period covered by EU4, in 1444 the Kingdom of Croatia was in personal union with the Kingdom of Hungary. The flag used by Croatia is a red and white motif called the Šahovnica, sometimes called the Croatian checkerboard. This design is the national symbol of Croatia and Croats more generally. As for the origin of this unique design, one particularly illustrative legend tells of how the Croatian king, Drichlav, was captured by the Venetians in the 10th century. However, the wily king challenged his jailers to a game of chess, and after winning three games in a row, not only secured his freedom, but overlordship of the trading cities of the Dalmatian coast. Another thing to note is that this design was carried into the fateful Battle of Mohacs in 1527, a battle which would end up changing the fortunes of Croatia forever. The decisive victory of the Ottoman Empire in this battle caused the virtual collapse of Hungary, and as a result, Croatia would end up passing into the hands of the Habsburgs for the next 400 years or so. The first of the formable German nations is Hanover, representing the electorate and later Kingdom of Hanover that was first elevated to the status of Prince Elector in 1692. 
The actual name of this state was the Electorate of brunswick Lunburg, although even early in its history it was known metonymically simply as Hanover, after its capital and largest city. I believe that in EU4, Hanover can also be assumed to represent any situation where the statelets of Lower Saxony unite. The symbol used by Hanover, a leaping white horse on a red field, has its origins in a broader Saxon identity. This horse is named the Saxon Steed, and its origins lie in the story of Widukind, the last pagan king of the Old Saxons. According to folklore, the banner of Widukind featured a leaping black horse on a yellow field. In 785, Widukind surrendered to Charlemagne and converted to Christianity, and so to commemorate this, the banner changed its colours to those seen here. A similar German nation to Hanover is the Kingdom of Westphalia, intended to represent the French client state of the same name established by Napoleon in 1807 after the Treaty of Tilsit. While ostensibly independent, this kingdom was very much dominated by France, with it having a constitution and centralised administration imposed on it, and even being ruled by Napoleon's youngest brother, Jerome. Admittedly, I have not been able to find much in the way of historical context for this flag, besides it being the same as that used by the historic client state. This simple white over blue flag was granted to Jerome Bonaparte in 1807. An alternative version was also in use that had white over red stripes instead, much more traditional colours for the area. Therefore, one possibility is that the alternative version was intended to represent their territory, while the more familiar blue one represented the ruler, the colour blue being extensively used by the House of Bonaparte since the proclamation of the French Empire. A recurring theme across many of the flags of this episode is that they are formed by combining pre-existing national symbols, which makes sense as many of the formable nations represent the outcome of states merging together. An excellent example of the use of this technique is Curland. The historical duchy of Curland and Semigallia was a nation based entirely within the modern borders of Latvia and with its capital at Jelgava. For much of its history, it was a vassal to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and it can be understood as the result of the territorial consolidation of the area. Before its formation in 1561, the territory of Livonia was divided between a number of semi-independent bishoprics, but the lion's share was possessed by the Livonian Order, a monastic military order that had begun its life as a branch of the Teutonic Knights. The formation of the duchy was effectively a secularisation of this monastic state, and indeed the first duke was the last landmeister of the order. As demonstrated by its full name, Curland comprised two distinct historical regions, both of which are reflected on its in-game flag. Curland itself is represented by the Red Lions rampant on silver fields in the first and fourth quarters. The neighbouring region of Semigallia is represented by the golden horned silver elk on azure fields in the second and third quarters. The design used in EU4 actually makes a slight error for both of these animals. In every version of the arms I've seen, they are supposed to face each other, whereas the in-game version has them all face towards the sinister, that is, the left. The formable nation of Scandinavia is something of a complex case, as the period closest to unification of the three main Scandinavian countries is early in the time period covered by the game. In Scandinavia, this period is referred to as the Kalmar Union, as the three kingdoms, Denmark, Sweden and Norway, were brought into personal union, becoming effective upon the coronation of King Eric of Pomerania in the city of Kalmar in 1397. While officially united under one monarch, and thus ostensibly under a single administration, the reality was one of permanent tensions between the court and the resentment of the Danish and Swedish nobilities, ultimately dooming the union to collapse. Similar to the case of Andalusia earlier in this episode, this hypothetical nation also appears to model itself on an earlier state, in this instance, the Kalmar Union. 
This is shown by the fact that the flag used for Scandinavia is the flag of the Kalmar Union, a red Nordic cross on a gold field. Unfortunately, sources for the meaning behind this flag are scarce, for now I shall simply have to offer that it seems to have been used since approximately 1430, where it is mentioned in a letter written by Eric of Pomerania. The other formable Scandinavian nation is the fairly improbable Iceland. While Iceland had been effectively independent for a time, until it pledged its fealty to the kings of Norway in 1262, this took place long before the game's starting date, and it wouldn't be until 1944 that an independent Iceland would come into existence once more. To further confuse matters, the emblem used by Iceland in-game was inspired by a coat of arms actually adopted in the 16th century. While this is period accurate for the game, it was also the arms used under the Dano-Norwegian rule over the island. Regardless, the flag of Iceland in-game uses a trio of stockfish, beheaded and gutted cod that have been spread out for drying. The Icelandic flag in EU4 certainly has more artistic liberties taken with it than there are on other flags, although I do admire the effort taken to do so. For example, in the coat of arms originally featuring the stockfish, the field was red, closely associated with both Denmark and Norway. However, the flag designer in this instance chose blue, which is much more closely connected to Iceland and was used on some of its earliest flags. Additionally, the Dano-Norwegian arms has the stockfish crowned, a feature absent in EU4. I may be reading too much into this, but I interpret this as a reference to the ancient republican traditions of the independent commonwealth of Iceland. Before the Old Covenant diminished it, Iceland had not known monarchy, and so it makes sense for a newly independent Iceland to once again drop the symbols of monarchy in its national imagery. Moving back to Eastern Europe, the formable nation of Ruthenia represents a hypothetically unified successor state that takes up the mantle of the Kievan Rus and is centred within present-day Ukraine. Ruthenia can be formed by any country of Belarusian or Ruthenian culture, although no states have these as their primary culture in 1444, and in fact the only nation to exist with Ruthenian culture at any start date are the Zaporozhian Cossacks, available between 1555 to 1755. In terms of symbology, I find Ruthenia is a similar case to the Welsh dragon or Flemish lion, which I covered in earlier episodes. While the symbol it uses is an ancient one, it was not until recent times that it was formally adopted as a part of national iconography. In this case, the symbol was adopted by the Ukrainian People's Republic in 1918, and is still in use today, although there was a hiatus during the Soviet period. The symbol in question is typically identified as a gold trident, in Ukrainian, a trizup. The trident originates from the time of the Kievan Rus. It was used on the seals of many of the early rulers of the Rurik dynasty, and has even been found imprinted on the bricks of the first stone church in Kiev, hinting that it was likely quite ubiquitous. While referred to as a trident, most historians now agree that it was not originally intended as such, but was instead a representation of the Holy Trinity, possibly as a show of devotion from a newly converted people. Additionally, some suggest it may have been inspired by the Geofalcon. I initially couldn't see this at all, but comparing one with its wings outstretched to some of the earlier designs, you do begin to see the resemblance. Choosing a single flag to represent Armenia must have been fairly difficult for the designers, as Armenia has had a great number of flags over its long history. At the game's opening, the only nation of Armenian culture is Karabakh, and even they are a vassal to Kara Kayonlu. The previous independent state was the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia, which had fallen to the Mamluks in 1375. In the time since, the area was subject to subsequent invasions by the Seljuks, Mongols and Turkomen, with the five principalities of Karabakh being the only remains of an autonomous Armenia in 1444. With all of that said, I am slightly confused as to why this particular symbol was chosen over others. The in-game flag is taken wholesale 
from one of the flags of the Rubenid dynasty, which ruled Armenian Cilicia from 1198 to 1219. If I had to guess why, then it would be that it is a fairly distinctive design, and a few other flags of Armenia used a similar device of a lion bearing a cross. While in real life a united Romania wouldn't officially gain independence until 1862, in EU4, nations with Romanian primary culture, those being Moldavia and Wallachia, can form it nonetheless. The flag it uses in-game is based on the national flag of Romania, still in use today. While the modern flag is a vertical tricolour of blue, yellow and red, the direct predecessors of this flag, used since 1840, were horizontal instead, although they did use the same colours. The in-game flag is almost an exact match to the one described by the Provisional Government in the June of 1848, the only difference being the absence of the text. The real-life flag had Justice, Fraternity, written in the central yellow band using the Cyrillic-derived Romanian transitional alphabet. In a similar case to Romania, Greece would not win its independence until after the time period covered in EU4, with the ultimately successful Greek War of Independence breaking out the year the game is supposed to end, and the official declaration of independence taking place the following year, in 1822. However, this was prefaced by long centuries of discontent at Ottoman rule, and so this tag exists in-game to allow for the possibility of Greek independence earlier than it took place in history. The flag used by Greece is directly based on a real-life flag. The earliest national flag proclaimed by the first Greek National Assembly in early 1822 to represent the entire nation and replace the plethora of revolutionary flags that had popped up across Greece. This flag comprises a white cross on a blue field. Curiously, before this declaration, a blue cross on a white field had been very popular amongst revolutionary groups since at least 1769, and the reason why these colours were inverted is not known. One possible explanation is that the representatives of that first national assembly wanted to appeal to the other countries of Europe for assistance, and in order to do so, distanced themselves from revolutionary iconography, considering the continental psyche was still reeling from the fallout of the French Revolution. Another peculiarity of this flag is that it had two distinct versions. The first was the land flag seen in EU4, to be used on land within Greece itself. The second was exclusively used abroad and as a civil ensign at sea, and it was this flag that was adopted as the sole national flag of Greece in 1978. With Greece now having been covered, I believe I will end the episode there. If you are particularly astute, you may have noticed that actually not all of the European formable nations have been covered in this episode, and that is simply because this episode was already running rather long, and I want to try and keep their length to, let's say, bite-sized portions. So in the next episode, which really hopefully shouldn't be too long, I will be covering all of the flags of the European formable nations which have eagles on them, and believe me that may sound like overly narrow criteria, but I swear there are quite a few of them. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have then as always please give that like button some use and consider sharing the video. Additionally, if you would like to see more content like this then also have a think about subscribing to the channel. I'm always interested in hearing from you, so if you have anything to say then please go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'm also on Twitter, so you can get in touch with me there instead if you prefer. Finally, I would just like to give a quick shout out to The Legend for recommending that I tackle these formable nations. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the episode, and I hope to see you again soon. Until then, have a fantastic week. Ciao!